This is how they are stealing your life. It's modern slavery. Now the resources that we value, time, money, labor, tools, land, raw materials, they all exist in limited supply. There's simply never enough resources to meet all our needs and desires, creating a condition known as scarcity. And of all the resources, time is the most important and the most scarce resource it's our life. It's the only resource we cannot get back. We can't get more of it. And once we lose it or use it, we cannot get it back. Time is the most valuable resource in the world, but our time and our life are being stolen. And you probably don't even realize this. So in this video, I'm going to explain how it's your life that's being stolen. I'm going to show you how this works, who's stealing it, what to watch for. And once you see this and understand this, it's going to lead to more freedom and more prosperity in your life. So let's go. All right. Now this is a important video that might catch you off guard, but once you understand this concept, it is going to change your life. So the first thing I want to set the stage with, which is one of my favorite Austrian economists here, von Mises. And he says that there are in the field of economics, which we're talking about today, our money, of course, in the field of economics, there's no constant, no constant relations and consequently no measurement is possible. So what he's talking about in economics, uh, the supply of real estate is going up and down. Houses are bigger, smaller. Oil, there's more oil, there's less oil. The prices of oil go up and down. There's no constant. That's what he's saying, right? And because of that, it makes measurement impossible. Or so he thinks. But I believe there's another way. Now, of course, he understands this, but there is one constant, and that is time. At the base of all economics, is time. And we talked about that sort of at the beginning. Now you might have heard this saying before that time is money. And let me explain what that is. So first thing is that we have is like I said, constants, the constants in human life, he says there's none, but there are the constant that you and I both have in life is our time. 24 hours in a day. I don't care if you're the richest person in the world, the poorest person in the world, we all have 24 hours in a day. And that is fixed time. Now the way it works to get a little philosophical here is that we have to expend, we have to spend, use our time and our energy, all right? So as we're expending our time and our energy, um, we can either use that for more resources we need to live our life, or we can save up that spent energy, spent time, and we can store that as money so we can use it later, right? So um, let's say that I need to spend four hours of my life, four hours of my time and my energy um, to dig a hole, to get, get enough resources to live on for the day. But I could work an extra four hours of my life, my time, my energy, and then I could get that in a form of money. That's basically saved energy that I could then use to spend another time. Now, a couple things that now that we've established that, let's get dig into some numbers here. Now, wages have basically risen since 1964 to the year to 2020. So we can see this, it's pretty easy. Here's a, the Fred data. Um, from the Fed, and you can see right here 1965. And so uh, wages have steadily risen for that time. Um, but that doesn't mean that things are getting any easier. So let's take a look at this. So um, this is the median wage growth right here. It's kind of going up again. You can see this growth right here. But the problem is this is the price of homes going up like this. So while wages are going up, the price of homes has been going up faster, which means it's harder and harder for you to get by. All right. Now, this is how they're starting to steal your time. So let's look at some of this data so you can get a better understanding of this. So in 1950, now we go back to 1950 because in 1971, something really big happened. And if you watch this channel on a regular basis, you know exactly what happened in 1971. Can I hear it? Can I get it in the comments? It's the year we got off the gold standard. So we use um, economic data from before that period. So in 1950, it took 4,743 hours or about 2.5 years of your life to buy the average home, right? In 2021, it now takes 14,000 hours or now seven years of your life to buy the home. So it used to take two and a half years of your life, of your time, the most scarce resource in the, in the world. Now it takes seven years of your life to buy that same home. All right. Now we can see a couple charts that really illustrate this. So this is the average home price. Of course, we've already looked at this. You can see since 1950, the average home price was only $8,400. Today, this year, we hit a new all-time high, about 25% up from last year. 
$389,000. But looking at it in the US dollar value doesn't really give you the accurate picture. What we're trying to look at is how long does it take you to save for the house? And we can see in 1950, it took 2.27. And now we can see all the way here at seven in 2020. So it's taking more of your life in order to get that home. Now we can see evidence of this all over the place. So for example, we can see evidence in the age of the buyer. So it takes more of your life. It takes more time to save for that home. So then of course, it's going to be later in life when you're able to finally buy that we can see today's first time home buyers are late boomers compared to those from decades before so we can see in 1970 again going back before 1971 it was of the average age of home buyer was 29 today it's 33 that's four years of life has been lost we can see in 1950 it for the average house payment it would take 27 hours of work and in 2020 for the payment for the house payment the average was 41 hours of work of course the problem with that that's more hours than you typically would work in a week and so that's a problem and we can see this illustrated over and over how much time to cover the mortgage again 1950 27 hours up to 68 hours we can see here the amount of time needed to pay your rent. So some like CPI, consumer price index, doesn't count the price, the total value of the home, rather it looks at a rent equivalent. So we'll take a look at that. So in 1950, it took 27 hours to pay your rent, and now it takes 45 hours to pay your rent in 2020. Again, still in your life, you have to spend that much more time to get that. Now, if we look at the data, the actual numbers, it's pretty interesting. If you want to get number specific, first time home buyers from the 70s rented um, 2.6 years, they bought homes about 1.7 times their income, while their millennial counterparts go for houses that cost 2.6 times their annual income. Almost double, stealing your life. Now, if we look at another category that affects everybody is transportation. In the United States, we use a lot of cars. Very few cities actually have good uh, public transportation. And we can see in the 1950s, it was a thousand hours of stored time. In 2020, it took 1,534 hours. So it went uh, from six months to nine months. Again, more of your life that is being taken away. Of course, we'll look at why that is. Now, the average new car sales price from 1950 at only 1,500 and all the way up here to 38,000 in 2020. So you can see the cost of those prices going up. And here we have the years to buy a house and a car. And again, 1950, 2.8 uh, was the average and all the way up to 7.6 required to buy an average house and a new car. Stealing five years of your life have been taken. Of course, those five years of your life could have been used for almost anything else that you wanted. Here's years to buy a house and a car. Again, 1950, 28, up to 7.6, you can see that. And here's an interesting one. This is the years lost to buying. So here we can see five years of your life, negative five have been lost. Like I said, that could have been spent traveling the world, hanging out with your kids, <laughs> investing into yourself, starting a new business, and on and on and on. Now, on top of that, because the value of your dollars are dropping so fast, it takes you working more to get those dollars to buy those same goods, it also forces you to become an investor. I know that my dollars are losing value, so I must put them somewhere so they can go up in value. So let's look at investing. So we can see that financial assets have been inflating like crazy. So one way to look at this is the S&P 500 index. So we can look at the S&P 500 index. In 1950, it would take 20 hours of the average pay to buy the index. Today, 2020, or last year, it took 100 and 20 hours to buy the same S&P 500 index. You can see how far you're getting behind. I mean, it's two and a half weeks of your life that's stolen. So the point here is that debasement is theft of time. Every time a dollar is created, the existing dollars are worth less and less and less. It's not that prices are going up, it's that your dollars are buying less. The debasement, the inflation is literally stealing your time. Now to really drive this point home because you may not really fully understand the impact yet. Let me take you a little tip uh, through a trip through history. You know I love to go back through history if you watch this uh, channel at all. And so you, let's go back to a time when there was cowrie shells. Now, you may know the story of cowrie shells. I'll run through it pretty quickly here. But back uh, several hundred years ago, European trade lines were going across the world. 
And of course, when they were trading to different parts of the world, they ran into problems. They needed different types of currencies. And so obviously one was using gold or coins, one was using brass, copper, one was using paper. That wasn't compatible. All right, now at the time, you can see here's a chart of these shipping lines. They were going all over the world to all different countries around the world. Well, at that time, um, you're, in Africa, they used something known as cowrie shells. And the cowrie shells were used as money there, and it worked as really good money. Now, there's several attributes of money, divisible, portable, um, things like that, but one of them is scarcity. And so in Africa, they had a finite amount of these shells, a limited amount, and so they worked pretty good as money, and it worked good for that time. But when the Europeans came over and they saw that they were using these shells as money, the Europeans thought, well, shoot, we can go mine these shells somewhere else for way cheaper. And that's exactly what they did. They went to Asia, they uncovered lots of these shells, they packed them into their ships, and they brought them over to Africa and they dumped them into the markets. Um, about 30 billion shells were dumped in the markets. We can see here that for centuries, it says, um, before European expansion in the 1500s, cowries were also used as a form of currency in some areas in Africa, the advent of the slave trade to the New World, cowries were among the items that Europeans exchanged with the coastal West African groups. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of cowrie shells exported from Southeast Asia to Europe and then re-exported from Europe to Africa. And so what they did is you had this African civilization that used cowrie shells as money. The Europeans went and got them for free or for very cheap from Asia and they brought them over to Africa with this basically counterfeit money, dumped it into the market and bought up all their resources, stole their life, stole their life's work, their time, and turned them into slaves. That's what led to the slave trade as you can see here. Later, those cowrie shells were also called slave beads as well. And then we can see the caravans of Arab traders were probably the first to introduce the cowrie shells back in the 8th century. Uh, the 15th century, they, they were used as money the Europeans had seen the fondness that certain African tribes had for the little shells and helped to make them the main currency in the trade of slaves, gold, and many other goods. Now, we can also see that it wasn't just shells. As a matter of fact, Africans also used glass beads. Their technology wasn't that advanced, so for them to create these glass beads, there was a considerable amount of time, money, resources that it would take to do those but the Europeans were more advanced at the time. They had superior technology. So they came over, they saw these little glass beads and said, well, heck, we can go make those. Those are easy. They go back to Europe. They mass produce, counterfeit, make cheaper glass beads. Same thing. They came back over to Africa, dumped them into the market, bought up all their resources and basically put them into slavery. Uh, I, I recently did a video on a speculative attack. Editor, go ahead and put that up right here. Um, and they basically performed a speculative attack on West Africa, created their money, their fake counterfeit money for cheaper, came and bought up all the resources, which as I says, I said before, led to slavery. We can see a picture of what these uh, beads look like. And we can see here, uh, including gold, gold slaves, ivory, and palm oil. At the time, glass beads were a major part of the currency. So the, gla the glass beads were um, allowed the Europeans to do that. Now, there's a simple concept here and that is that when one group of people have a money printer and another group of people are trading their life, their time for money, it leads to slavery every single time. So history just repeats. When someone can create money for cheap, cheaper than you can, then and then they dump that currency into the system, the result is the same every time. So you're working hard for your money. You're working hard to save it but someone at the central bank has a money printer. Some of the central bank is producing glass beads and cowrie shells. They're pushing a button on a keyboard, creating trillions of dollars and stealing your life, stealing your time, literally years of your time to get the same standard of living, the house, the car, the S&P 500 shares that people just a few decades ago were able to get. Central banks are doing this, like I said, in the trillions, using the money printer to steal your time. Have you ever thought about it like that? Let me know, leave me a comment and let me know. Stealing time with a money printer. That's why we need to remove the money printer. We need to separate money and state. That's why we talk about central bank policies are bad, sound money is good. Of course, sound money are things that cannot be inflated. 
Gold has been money for 5,000 years, works really well for that. Of course, Bitcoin, one of my favorites as well. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about having your time. The most scarce asset, most scarce resource in the world being stolen by these central bankers. As always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. And if you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. But you know I'm working hard either way, so at least leave me a comment and let me know why you don't like it. All right, that's what I got for you today. To your success, I'm out.